Hi, I'm Peter Ballantyne. I'm Head of Knowledge Management at the International Livestock Research Institute in Ethiopia and I'm here in Bangkok attending the Global Learning and Evidence Exchange on Scaling Up, which is organized by USAID. Uh, and my name is uh, Michael Victor. I work for the uh, CGIR Research Program on Water, Land and Ecosystems. I'm the Knowledge Management and Communication Coordinator. So Michael, yesterday at this Scaling Up event, you talked about the role of communication and knowledge management in Scaling Up. What was the main message? I, I think the main message was was that there's uh, that you know communication and knowledge management has to be systematically done, and it has to be done uh, through a process of identifying what the key issues are, what are some of the problems that different stakeholders are having or the targets are having, uh, then designing potential approaches to that, uh, and then going through the testing of the products and the services that you might provide and then monitoring and evaluating those. So it's the systematic approach to actually doing comms and KM to actually support the outcomes that you want. So it's not just comms and KM for kind of a, it's a much more strategic function than we would say then for kind of a, a organizational function. It's not just comms and KM for uh, PR or for uh, for the organizational corporate communication or corporate you know, knowledge management, but really trying to support the outcomes that you want. And I think one of the things that, the couple of the things that came up with the, that was quite interesting there was that the, the comms and KM has to be seen as part of an overall process and be embedded in some of the systems that we've already developed for delivery of uh, technologies or delivery or you know spreading out technologies or bringing stakeholders together so the innovation platforms engagement platforms seem to be one of the key issues that we really need to start to develop if we're going to move from just having a little bit of a project approach to moving towards bringing stakeholders together I thought that was one of the issues and maybe mm -hmm. you could talk a bit mm -hmm. about you know the innovation platforms and your experiences with those uh, in terms of really bringing together stakeholders to start to define what's the agenda and getting them to mm -hmm. communicate together. And I think that's what we saw is that you, know, you need to bring the stakeholders together because they're the ones who are actually then going to go out and do the work. So, I mean, yeah. very often communication and knowledge management is very much kind of a one-way, let's get content, let's get the knowledge out. And there's an element of that here. A lot of the ICT people talk very much, mobile phones, let's get the stuff out. But one of the biggest opportunities, I think, and the thing we've been working on with all this, the Nile Basin and the Challenge Program on Water and Food, is how do you really create the platforms and mechanisms to bring the voices, all of the voices. So it is a way to reach out, but it's also a way for them to reach in, in a sense. And so that's been a very positive. Though, yeah, I think it's quite challenging. Those, those platforms are kind of get a life of their own at some point, and people get them very confused to have multiple purposes. Mm. But yes, indeed. But what was the main learning problem? What did the people, I mean, this, this, this scaling out, you just had now a whole bunch of people who don't know anything much about communications. What were they asking? What were they zooming in on, really? What was their worry? The, there were two things that came out, really. Was uh, and, I, and I think it gets back into the innovation platforms yeah. as well. Uh, is the sustainability of these systems. Yeah. So, you know, if you're doing communications, knowledge management, great when the, the projects are there and great yeah. when, when the donors are there, but how do you, how do you make it sustainable? Uh, and, and also the impacts, you know, can you start to, to yeah. really kind yeah. of document or demonstrate what's the contribution of comms and KM to the actual, uh, to the actual scaling yes. up, you know, yes. what's their contribution? Well, I mean, what for me is very interesting with meetings like this mm -hmm. is that you, very much the communication agenda is often driven by what we think people should know. Mm -hmm. And very often our colleagues, our, the researchers, the policy makers, the development actors, they have very clear ideas of what they want to do. They, they know what their outcomes are, whether they're nutritional outcomes, mm -hmm. whether they're um, food security outcomes. And very often we need to be embedding totally our, our, our kind of messaging, our activities mm -hmm. within those agendas. And innovation platforms is part of that. I mean, certainly within the CGIR, these platforms are being used as a new way of doing research as a new way of doing innovation, mm -hmm. in a sense. And they are, so we need to be part of that whole conversation. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's one of the things that, you know, I mean, when we were going through the communication strategy approach that came up very clearly, mm -hmm. is if you do that by yourself, if you try to, you know, develop a campaign even by yourself or without, yeah. it's not addressing a problem, no. it's not bringing in the researchers, uh, and you're trying to lead that process on your own, you're going to get nowhere. Yeah. There's going to be no content, yeah. no interest. And it's, yeah, how do we embed ourselves into the research itself yes. and, and I think yeah. still in the CGIR that's one of the big challenges the 
communication, the knowledge management is seen as a support function rather than a strategic mm -hmm. function. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and as we start to get to uh, move to outcomes, you know, and it's not just getting the research outputs and the research results, but actually moving to outcomes where people are changing their knowledge, attitudes, and skills, changing policies. Uh, that's where then people can work together. Yeah, but this is where they, I think the communication, those people have put themselves in that support role very often. Right. And I think being involved in conversations like this is exactly where we need to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite striking. There was, that, there was a meeting recently where someone from China said, you know, we're doing research with, with, our, with she said, you know, we're, we're doing research projects where we reach thousands. And then she said, and we want to scale up to reach hundreds of thousands. <laughs> And, it, and from hundreds of thousands to the millions. And mm. in China, that was the kind of a scale they were talking about. Mm. But at a certain moment, to go from thousands to hundreds of thousands or to millions, you have to have knowledge communication. Mm -hmm. It has to be part of that. So it means like it's not a supporting function. It is like the function, in right. a sense. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I don't know how you change that. Mm. But I, I think this is, again, how where organizations you know, with USAID or organizations mm -hmm. like the CGIR mm -hmm have to start to see that if they're going to have, you know, yeah. particularly for the CGR, if we're going to have to move to outcomes, that it's not just the research you're going to have to invest. If you just want to do research, then you don't need to invest in all this other stuff. You don't need to invest in yeah. partnerships. You don't need to invest in communication, knowledge management. You can have, yeah. you know, the PR group to go out and do different things. But if we're going to get to, you know, if we really want to affect change in development practices, then you know, you're going to have to invest in the yeah. partnerships. You're going to have to invest in people who are using communication in different ways. And that's what we heard today. One of the speakers said something ar around, you know, in that extension session, that we, we train the, the, the people to develop the technologies. We don't train the people to disseminate yeah. mm -hmm. and have the uptake of the technology. So you have to really rebalance that. Yeah. that. But I, ha I have the sense it's a very positive. I mean, we are seeing here, we heard from the, some of the top people here from AID. They often talked about communication, agri-links, mm. the blogs, the website. We need to go out. We're going to continue this conversation. You Using communication and knowledge management tools and approaches, I think we're we're on the it's a kind of a wave, yeah. and it's a really positive yeah. for communication and knowledge management. Yeah. Yeah. How well we surf it, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah.